Welcome back, everyone. Look at us. We are outside. We are joined by uh, Paula Smith and Sharon Davis with the SCA. Now, uh, Paula, would you mind giving us and our viewers an overview of what the SCA is, what it stands for? Sure. Sure. The SCA is the Society for Creative Anachronism. Anachronism is basically anything that's out of its proper time or place. So we uh, recreate, we're an educational and historical reenactment group that focus on pre-17th century, anything from that time period. We have people that make things um, from that time period. We have people do um, fighting that's as close to how it was done during that time period. And we do um, pretty much anything that had been done in that time period. We have members that make the things as close to what, what it was made back then as we can. I'm curious too, okay, why pre-17th century, the importance of that, and why is it important to keep these things alive? We think that um, just history in general is important for people to, you know, understand where we've come from. Um, Pre-17th century, it's just kind of a, a good um, stopping point. Basically, we go until the end of Queen Elizabeth I's reign, and that was basically almost at the very beginning of the 1600s, <clears throat> so um, right, right, right at the beginning of the 17th century. Wow. I'm interested, Sharon and Paula, how long have you been a part of the SCA and what kind of drew you to it in the first place? Uh, I've been a member for close to 30 years, actually. My husband and I found the SCA when we went to the Kansas City Renaissance Festival. And back then, the group actually had a little booth, uh, information booth set up, and we were just we were thrilled and we, we were just like, this is really neat. And so uh, that's how we learned about it. And that's how we started getting involved. And Sharon, how about you? I started playing about 22 years ago, but with about a 10 year break in the middle when I started having babies. <laughs> it's, I was introduced to the SCA by a friend who was playing. Oh. And she first invited me to come to the biggest SCA event, which is in August in Pennsylvania, and has 10 to 15,000 people. That was a little overwhelming, but when I did feel ready to play, I was living in Colorado at the time, and I just looked it up online and found an event that was coming up and contacted the person that it said to contact, got the information I needed, they loaned me clothes to wear, and it went from there. Can I ask a stupid question? When I think of this, I think of those Renaissance fairs, I think of, are you going to Scarborough Fair? Is that similar along the lines? As similar, the only difference as far as what we do and what you'll see at Renaissance <laughs> festivals is they're a little more, um, a little, fantasy based and we're much more educational historically based um and typically what you'll see there as far as the performances and things like that they're close to the the way things were done back then but we we, tr we try to be a lot more focused to um, being historically accurate well and i think the biggest difference is that the renaissance fairs are a show put on a product put on for paying guests, whereas the SCA is a game that we're all playing together. I love it. Everyone is a participant. We're all part of creating this great show together. Mm -hmm. oh, well, and speaking of shows, you are a singer. As Paula was saying, you can do in the SCA pretty much everything that was done in the Middle Ages, um, and that includes music. Could you sing us a song? Certainly. Okay. Um, the music that is done in the SCA, we do both the period music, the actual medieval and renaissance music, but we also have a thriving culture of people writing new songs oh. that are either based on historical events or maybe mythology, fantasy does come into it sometimes, um, or about the SCA itself. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of SCA culture with an original song that oh, I wrote. Please do. Okay. Are, are you singing or playing or both or just um, I will sing. Okay, here we go. You see before you a lady of God, but the tale of my life's filled with sorrow. I once was a queen on a great golden throne with nothing but hope for the morrow. My Lord built a kingdom 
peaceful and fair, where chivalry ruled each endeavor. A sweet golden dream, those days in the sun, destroyed by my weakness forever. Now I sit and I gaze out my abbey cell window and I see not the stars but a face that I loved and I hear the voice of memory calling Guinevere, Guinevere, don't break my heart. Beautiful. Oh, I love that story. It tells the story. And if you it's... want to hear the rest of the story, you'll oh. have to come to an SCA event. There you go. <laughs> How fun is that? I love that. I know, and I love that you guys, or the SCA and people a part of it, are still writing original music. I mean, how unique and, yes. and how, you know, I guess niche to the SCA. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, guess what? When we come back, we're going to talk about some of these uh, instruments and the tools they use pre-17th century from our friends from SCA. So don't go anywhere. So much more fun on Ozarks Fox AM after this. That was beautiful. That was so beautiful. Oh.